Greetings and salutations, everybody. Welcome back. Unless you are new, then welcome for the first time. I like to make these little videos about films that I enjoy and want to share, uh, usually once or twice a week. And like I say, I try to just focus on the ones that I enjoy. There are some cases where I'll uh, approach a film that I didn't enjoy, such as checking out a box set or revisiting an entire franchise or maybe checking out some remakes to see if there's anything worth watching in that remake. And in those cases, if I don't enjoy the film, I may end up still making a video, which is the case for this week's video for um, this remake of Friday the 13th from 2009. So it was part of this big box set I got a little over a year ago, about a year and a half ago, which I did um, a review of every one of these films on my channel last summer. So I did various videos about different films within it. Uh, eventually, I did the Nightmare on Elm Street ones and did Freddy vs. Jason, but I held off on doing the remake of Friday the 13th for a while because I wanted, I didn't want all of the original stuff to be so fresh in my mind. I wanted to go in open-minded with this remake because all I remembered from it was that I didn't enjoy it and that they tried to take the first three films and shove them into this one reboot. And so that's where we start. You know, we get a very underused Nana visitor playing the role of Pamela Voorhees. We get a very quick throwback to show what had happened at the camp and that her head was taken off. And then we flash forward a little bit and we got a group of people coming out there. These kids, one of them played by Ben Feldman, who I know from Superstore mainly and also from Silicon Valley, trying to find weed that they were going to sell. Jason starts taking them out for some reason. They're not even at the camp. So we're even beyond the camp even being a thing anymore. It's been closed down for a while, and he's just randomly taking people out in the area. People in the area seem to know that there's something funny that happens in the woods, and there's this urban legend about this Jason guy, but it just doesn't really have as much meat going on as that build-up between parts 1, 2, and 3. Now, I understand why they were trying to shove all that together. Get it from the mother being the killer, which most people don't expect if they've never seen these films before, to what they are more familiar with, which is him in the hockey mask killing everybody. So... <clears throat> Flash forward a little bit more, and now we have another group of people coming out to stay at a cabin out there. And um, there's a character played by Jared, Padale uh, yeah, Jared Padalecki from Supernatural, who is tracking down his sister, who is one of the people from that first group who went missing. Um, this other group of like college-age kids hanging out the cabin, one of them is played by Ryan Henson, who is, you know, I mainly know him from Party Down, and he seemed to be almost playing the same exact character from Party Down. I kind of looked at it as like since that character was working as a caterer and trying to become an actor that this is that actor's big break it just really did not work none of those characters worked they were extremely shallow they seemed like parodies it would be like if they took characters from tucker and dale versus evil and just threw them into this movie and said just believe that they're actually real and try to care about them getting killed or not and seeing who survives didn't work except for um, Jared Padalecki and Daniel Panabaker, who plays one of the kids as well. So I know her mainly from The Flash and a little bit before that from Sky High. The two of them were the only ones that seemed to have any real chemistry and actually have any material that they could do something with. So it was hard to be worried about what character would get killed and be afraid of anything when I didn't care about any of them and I didn't even really understand why Jason was killing people. You know, I feel like the first three films, we get this um, this idea of revenge. You know, Jason drowns, mother goes crazy, starts killing people for revenge. She gets her head taken off, and Jason comes across this, and now he's killing any counselors getting revenge. And then by the time we get to part four, he's kind of branched out into that surrounding area. He's just this mutated guy who is gonna keep on killing. And this one, that just wasn't as evident. And his character <clears throat> was very different than what I'd seen from my two favorite Jasons, which, um, of course, are Kane Hodder and um, CJ Graham, where they could play it as very imposing, even if they're moving kind of slowly, if they're just emoting with like how they breathe or how they turn their head. This one was really running at your full force, and the character seemed a lot smarter. For some reason, he's got this house with these tunnels with electricity, and he's got a cage that he built to keep one of the characters locked up, the sister played by uh, Jerry Padalecki's character. So pretty much nothing in this movie worked except for the scenes between Jerry Padalecki and uh, Danielle Panabaker. Um, I didn't really find it scary or anything. Now, the, the only other films in the series that I don't really look back fondly on are part seven and part five. But even from those, I could find some stuff that I enjoyed in them and every now and then I'll do a, a rewatch. 
This one, I'm not actually sure if I would ever do another rewatch of it because even those last 10 minutes, I was just waiting for this film to end. It's one of those few cases where they just really missed the mark with the remake. You know, I've seen remakes where, of course, they're not as good as the original. They most likely never will be. But I can still find a lot of good stuff. I mean, I, I like stuff about Ghostbusters, stuff about Robocop. I loved a lot of stuff about Fright Night. And there's even a lot of stuff in the Nightmare on Elm Street that I enjoyed on that remake. Even that prequel to The Thing, which I also did a, a video for, there were aspects of that that I really enjoyed, even if overall I felt like it was kind of a pointless prequel since you already know what's going on in the second film. But um, anyways, back to this one, I don't feel like they really brought anything new to it. Now, I can appreciate that they were trying to speed up this reboot instead of having to get through years of the mother being the killer and now he's got the bag on his head. And now he finally gets his mask. Get him to the what's known in pop culture the most, which is him wearing the mask, walking around with a machete, killing people. I can appreciate what they were trying to do to speed that up and bring in a new audience. But I think where they really missed the mark was on just building the story around that in a way that's going to flow a lot better because the pacing was all off. So this is about, you know, the most rant that I've gone against a single film in one video. I think the last time I really went this harsh on a film was when I had revisited all, all, revisited all of the Fright Night movies, including the Fright Night 2 New Blood, which really did not care for that one. But... I would probably say I'd be more up for watching New Blood than I would re-watching this film. But anyways, that's a very quick little video here about the uh, 2009 remake and attempted reboot of the Friday the 13th franchise. I don't think there's much plan for this franchise going forward. I know that Peacock, I believe, is working on a prequel series about Crystal Lake, which is probably going to be out sometime this year. And earlier this year, there was some talks about rebooting the franchise once again, but I haven't really seen much more news about that. And of course, you know, we've had this video game that had been going pretty well. It was seemed like a lot of fun. I played it a couple times myself. I believe it's finally going to be going offline at the end of this year. So it had a decent run, but there were some licensing issues. But anyways, still as a whole, I really do enjoy this franchise quite a bit. I enjoyed it a lot more on certain entries than I thought. But this, uh, this remake just really didn't do it for me. If you do have morbid curiosity, I think it's on paid rental. I wouldn't advise that. But if you do find the same box set, I got this one for sale. I think it was on sale for about 70 bucks, which is more than worth it. Because even if you only like half of these films, you're still going to end up with 12. Yeah, 12 films to check out. I think up to 10 the remake and Freddy vs. Jason yeah so 12 films to check out plus tons of special features and everything that's probably the only way I could recommend checking out this remake if you have that morbid curiosity but anyways um that's all I got for this one thanks for checking out the video and for sticking around to the end as liking and subscribing and hitting that little bell icon all those things really do help out quite a bit thank you very much and I will see you in the next one